What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Absolute Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hunt, and today I have Joe Stanek on the podcast. I think this is his fourth time on the podcast, but Joe and I are good friends. This was a fun podcast. We talked a lot about breaking into the fitness industry, breaking into coaching specifically, but but a lot of these things are, are really just about breaking into any industry or, or advancing in your career and just some habits to have and we share some experiences and how I got started coaching, how I started on fitness and how Joe got started coaching as well. I think I think you guys find this pretty interesting, pretty interesting podcast. As always, let me know. Hit me up on Instagram at Hunt Fitness. Let me know what you think. I do have an announcement. You guys know my book, Bodybuilding for Beginners, ships August 13th, so about two weeks away from that, the physical copy shipping. But the Kindle edition, the ebook, is for sale right now. If you go to Amazon, click the link in the show notes, you can literally be reading the book in like 30 seconds with one click on Amazon. How great is that? One click on Amazon. You could be reading the book in 30 seconds. So if you've been dying and you're like, man, I can't wait till August 13th for this physical copy book to come in, head over to Amazon, get the Kindle, download it. You can be reading it right now. You, you, might, you might already be reading it. Are you? Are, did you already download it? <laughs> Other than that, guys, this podcast is sponsored by PR Breaker, the pre-workout I use and recommend, PR Breaker Materia, three great flavors, all study dose ingredients, best pre-workout formula on the market, at least one of them, arguably one of them, and uh, the protein tastes amazing. I've been, like I said, I've been plowing hit point. I've been eating it more, probably more than I'm willing to admit, but a good chunk, at least half my protein has been coming from hit point lately. I've been so busy that... Having two or three shakes a day just makes a lot of sense for me. But still on those consistency breakfasts and, uh, you know, can't take away mags and oatmeal. Hunt 10 is the discount code. Save yourself some money. Help support the Absolute Strength Podcast. PRbreaker.com. Use the discount and, you know, save yourself some money. Other than that, I'm a coach. If you want to take your training and nutrition to the next level, we talk a lot about coaching in this one. Talk a lot about coaching. If you're interested in working together, Hit me up, send me an email, kylehuntfitness at gmail.com, or click the coaching link in the show notes. And if nothing else, let's start a conversation. Let's jump on a call and we'll see if we'll be a good fit. Talk about your goals and how we can work together to get you to achieving them. August already. Damn. All right. Sit back, relax, enjoy. Joe Stanek. <laughs> Actually, move up to, to Colorado to be with uh, the TSA guys. Well, yeah, that's what you—that's what you told. Me. That's what I remember. I think last time we talked, I think that's what the plan was. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was that was the original idea, but I don't know, man. You know, you do you do crazy stuff when you're in love, right? So, yeah. Um, so yeah. Amber and I have been looking for places for a while now, and we were lucky enough to find this awesome place um, with you know manageable rent and uh, thankfully uh, an office for, for me, which. I'm not in right now. I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm at, at Convoy Strength at, at Amber's gym. This is actually the, the massage therapy office, but, um, the, the office is the one thing that we still have yet to finish setting up. So for now, this is the, this is the move. Plus, uh, I actually did another podcast yesterday and the dogs got a little bit noisy. So we actually have to re-record that. So, yeah, um, you, but yeah, I've been seeing, you've been, you've been on the podcast circuit lately. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm actually doing another one this coming weekend as well. Um, Big so, time. Yeah. yeah, I know. I, I always love doing podcasts too, because it's always a chance to, to talk to, to new people or, or catch up with old friends. And, um, it's always a blast. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Moving to California has been a big thing. Um, also, uh, just generally, um, been, you know, training a lot, uh, got a new meet picked out that I'm going to be doing in March. Um, hopefully raw nationals in 2020. I haven't done nationals since 2015. So yeah, Scranton, uh, right? Yeah, I know. I know that was a, God, that was a minute ago. That was, that, that was that first one that was really in my mind was just an explosion for the sport. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I remember that so, was, a, that was a big, that was a big meet. I mean, then of course you had, um, you know, Jesse Norris, that was like the big draw that yeah. you've seen in lane. So I remember that day was super busy. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was cool. Um, that was, that was Bryce's first year at one Oh five. So that was really neat. Um, it was, it was a blast. Uh, back then it was a, 
I don't know. It seems, it seems like it's just gotten so much bigger every year, but it's funny because you always see the same faces. Um, so, th- I mean, this year will be no different. Uh, Chicago is a, a cool, cool look. Well, I think it's Lombard. I, I don't want to, I don't want to mispronounce the name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's, that's where it is this year. So that'll be a cool venue, but I'm definitely looking forward to 2020 when it's in Daytona beach because let's face it, you know, Daytona sunshine can't beat that. Yeah, yeah, closer to me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe you should uh, actually think about doing it this maybe year. Maybe I'll actually do it. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Actually, you know, I, I planned on. Well, this shit always comes up. You know what I mean? Like shit always comes up. But um, yeah, this year was like this year turned into pretty much the year of me writing books, which I never would have planned on. But you know, it, it's funny. I always do like a reflection at the end of every year. I, I'm sure like most people do it. And I, I try to like actually like think back. I'm like, okay, like what was my thought process a year ago, like 12 months ago? What, what did I think? And then I think, so I, I go backwards and then I also go, okay, let me try to future pace. What, what do I anticipate for the next 12 months? And, you know, last December when I did that, writing books was not even on like really anything I I planned on doing, but then the opportunity came up and then I wrote that one and I'm actually writing another one right now. So it's like, shit, it wouldn't have been anything I would have thought I was going to do this year, but then 2019 turned into the year of me being an author. (laughs) That's pretty cool, man. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled for you. That's, I mean, that's really, really cool. I think that's a, a unique thing in the, in the fitness space that you don't see, everybody get to do um even even if if it was just like a a self-published book a lot of people don't step into that so i i've personally never written anything longer than like a term paper Mm -hmm. so i can't imagine what the process of writing a book is like but i have to imagine it's super intense so good on you for that you know it's um like I always thought that it, it, it's, it's funny because I always thought that I would enjoy the process of actually writing a book. Cause I've always enjoyed writing and, and researching and reading and stuff. But until you actually do it, you never know. But luckily once I got into it, I was like, Oh shit, I actually do really like this. It's one of those things that it, it just like, I knew it was a grind and it was a lot of work, like extra work on top of coaching and everything else I was doing. But it didn't feel like work. It was just one of those things where it was like, I know I'm spending a lot of time and energy on this and I'm working hard at it, but I'm enjoying it enough to where it doesn't really feel like I'm working. Yeah, man. I, uh, I, so just recently I, I kind of committed to, um, starting to put out some of my own, uh, YouTube content. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, plugs, uh, so that's going to be, that's gonna be starting like mid, mid to late August. Um, Well, it's been, it's been cool because I forgot how, how, how much fun I have like planning projects like that. Mm-hmm. So I can, I can absolutely sympathize with it. Just not feeling like work. Um, but my, my buddy, uh, my buddy Lanny, who's a, uh, a, a cameraman himself and an editor, uh, is helping me out, uh, which is, yeah, is definitely making the, yeah, that's definitely key. making the, the process easier, but it, it's, it's cool because we're, you know, we're kind of scheming on, on how we want to do things. And, um, I don't know, it's nice because it feels like a creative outlet. And I, I have to imagine that's probably how it felt for you. Yeah, hundred percent. It was, um, you know, it, it's cool when you have a creative outlet that you're, you're really enjoying. And honestly, that's what this podcast is too, in a sense. Um, speaking of YouTube, pretty much the podcast replaced my YouTube, but, um, right. You know, I used to always enjoy making videos too. Like it, there is something about that, like planning out a video and just like having fun with it. I used to enjoy that. We did yeah. a couple of videos. We did a couple of videos back in the day. Yeah, man. I've been on, I've been on your channel a few times. Uh-huh. Yeah. I do. I do have to admit, I, I do sometimes miss the old hot fitness. Oh, logo. everyone misses that. The, yeah. The, the intro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually that was, put that into an intro for a podcast one time. I remember. I did, one, there's you know, only one episode know. ever. You know I listen to all your episodes. It's only been one episode ever. I know you do. I actually want to get your feedback. I know you listen to them. What have you been thinking about the book reviews I've been doing? You know, I the one that I actually... So I've, I've of course, been listening to them, and I, I like all of them. The one that I thought was was the most interesting was actually the the one on the Bulgarian burst method because I had never heard of anything like that. Uh-huh. Um, so that was that was cool um i was actually i was listening to that as i caught my my flight to to san diego to actually like move here 
because uh, I, I shipped my car and everything. I was not doing a cross, cross country. Yeah, everyone country. did that. Um, and I, I don't know, man, I think it's, I think it's unique. I think it's cool because let's face it. A lot of people just don't like to read. I mean, that's one of the reasons why they listen to podcasts in the first place. So I, I love it. I'm in support of it. Um, it's helpful for me because it exposes me to things that I might not have gotten the chance to sit down and read. Um, yeah, I say, keep them up. Cool. Good. Yeah. I've, I've enjoyed doing them, but they are significantly more work, which I, I guess I, I didn't really think about it beforehand. I was like, Oh, I'm just going to pull, pull out the book I've read before and just read it, you know, but then you, then you get ready for the podcast and you realize there's like, if you, you, you gotta let you, you have to actually pick and choose like what you're going to read <laughs> and have it make sense. You know what I mean? Like kind of tell the story, but yeah, that Bulgarian burst training, like I, it was the funniest thing. Like one day I was just training in the gym. This is back in New York. I think right after I graduated college and this guy just handed me that, that manual. I'm like, all right, I'll take a look at it. And I just remember reading, like, this is like the craziest thing ever. And nobody ever talks about it. Like no one ever talks about that manual. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, I was just like immediately after finishing the podcast, I was like, maybe I should try this. And then I was immediately like, no, <laughs> you know, it, it, I, I remember exactly like, as I'm reading it. I'm like, Oh, this is dumb. This is dumb. I finish it. Maybe I should try that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just one of those things. Like, um, I remember, um, I'm sure you, you, you've had him on before you, you're pretty familiar with Ben Escrow. Oh yeah. Uh, so he and I were, he and I were discussing cause Ben, he's a very experimental guy, obviously, you know, owning a supplement company, but yeah. he, he told me back in the day, he really used to do a ton of training experiments. And one thing that he did is while he was prepping for bodybuilding, he did DUP, but like twice a day and he would, so, and that's how he mapped it out. So he, so his morning, like it would start with like his morning session would be a volume session then his afternoon session would be a, a power session, quote unquote. And then, then the next session, the next day would be strength and then volume. And then he would keep going and he would just do that over and over again. And I remember thinking to myself like, Oh my God, I would never do something like that. It's, it's just, I don't know the, the crazy stuff that people who like understand training variables and understand the science behind it can come up with. Like, it's just nuts. Um, I, uh, I just, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, part of me wants to like someday, like write this like crazy training system of my own and, uh, see, see what I could possibly come up with. And then if it doesn't kill me, maybe, you know, maybe coin it, you know, you know how everybody has their signature thing. Maybe oh, that'll yeah. be mine someday. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, are you really in the fitness industry until you have like your signature, like named program? I mean, I, I don't think I don't, so, man. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> Now, next level is when you get a named diet, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Those the, named diets, I tell you. Oh yeah, that's that's the that's the big one. That's the one that everybody will talk about mostly controversially. Uh huh. Um, well, for obvious reasons. Oh, of course. Everyone always asks. Actually, I was doing a Q and A on Instagram today, and someone asked me about the vertical diet, and I was like, "Look, I'm probably never going to do any named diet." the rest of my life. Not be, look, not because I just think that they're terrible. I mean, there's some, you know, good points on all of them for the most part, but it all, I always go back to the quote. It's, there's a lot of different methods, but there's very few principles. And once you really understand the principles, and this goes for training too. That's why once you really understand programming variables, you're not really looking for programs anymore it's like you know how people are like oh i want to follow this program or that program again not that they're that's not a good way to go about it it's a good way for certain people but once you really understand the the variables now it's more it switches from a program to now you're just following programming not yes. just a program it's a programming yep yep couldn't agree more um and I, you know the funny thing is i i agree with exactly a lot of the principles like the, the vertical diet for example like most of it is just you know eat micronutrient rich foods have enough protein that kind of deal it's just like but it's those it's those little nuanced things that make it like a a little bit of a a, a weird thing that i'm just like yeah maybe we don't need to worry like i, I actually had a lifter ask me they're just like should i start mega dosing sodium and i'm like probably not <laughs> you don't need to be drinking like pickle juice or anything if that's what you're thinking um but yeah, I, I it's it you know it's crazy about the the fitness industry in general and i, I think this is Segwaying, master of segways mm -hmm. over here. Um, You're always good with the segways. See, I just start talking about random shit, and I'm like, Joe will bring us back. I mean, it's yeah. it's not even his yeah. podcast, but he'll bring us back. 
Oh, I, I think, well, I, I think this is what we, we had like briefly talked about actually talking about was just like the process of like getting, getting into the fitness industry, what that was like for like having a conversation about that and what we, you know, what our experiences were like, and maybe just little things we could pass on to, to other people, um, as we've gotten into it. And I, I think, I mean, just starting off in general, the, the big thing is that the principles always stay the same, you know? Um, so as long as you kind of stick to that, no matter where you want to go in, in the fitness industry, you're, you're probably going to be able to, to make your way pretty far. Would you not agree? Oh, I a hundred percent agree. It's, and I, I think it's, it's tough because methods are what sell, you know, and it kind of exactly what we were just talking about, like jokingly, but, but kind of serious. Like why do people attach a name to like training programs? It's easier to sell it. Why do people attach a name to diets? It's easier to sell like the, the paleo diet. Like the, like the whole name, like paleo, like it, it kind of mis, it, it misleads the diet, but it also was very important in becoming mainstream. Like that's why it got really popular. People was, oh, paleo. Okay. I recognize, okay, this is what our, you know, the people ate back then, which maybe they didn't, maybe they didn't, probably didn't, you know, probably didn't, but the name insinuates that. And again, the, the diet itself, like if you just said, oh, look, we're, it's lean meats and fruits and veggies. That's it. Okay. Put a name on it. It sells. And yes. then what happens is people start thinking like, oh, we need to follow a diet. need to follow uh, a, a training plan instead of actually like uh, analyzing it and say, okay, well, all right, well, what is this? What are the principles here? And then you start looking across the board and say, okay, well, a lot of these say, things have the same principles. It's just a different name and just slightly different, slightly little bit different. The, the details are what's different, not the, the main things. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think, I think more so than anything, like with, with any sort of diet, if, if you can be, um, sustainable with it and if you can, you know, live your life that way, uh, practice like a balance of restricting and non-restricting, then it's probably a good idea. Most of the time, those types of diets though, just that doesn't end up being the case. No. Well, whenever you throw in, rules like these fake rules like they're rules that don't make any sense you know Mm -hmm. that's when you start you start losing me you know even like with the the vertical diet when you start throwing in the weird shit is when you're like okay why (laughs) why is that (laughs) you know i i will i will never understand it man uh but honest honestly that's that's probably what it comes down to is those like unique little selling points well yeah um and like, it's, it's funny as, as I, you know, as I, I was preparing for this episode, I was, I was kind of trying to like, look back on my own journey into becoming a, a powerlifting coach and, and just what got me to this point. And I was thinking back, like right when I, and I, I don't know if this was your experience when you first started lifting, but when I, when I first started lifting, um, I wanted to just kind of generally be in, in better shape. Um, not for any particular reason other than, you know, I just, well, actually there was a specific, uh, picture actually that's still on my Facebook to this day. Uh, I was at a, a homecoming dance and I took a, I took a photo with my friends and I was even just like over exaggerating, but I had like, I had like four double chin, <laughs> like just, I was, I was doing that kind of like on purpose, but yeah, you know, I was expecting yeah. one and there were four uh-huh. and I was like, Oh, okay. Maybe I'm a, maybe I'm a little bit overweight. You're like where'd, the, uh, where'd those extra three come from? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where I, where I got my original inspiration to start like making changes and stuff like that. And I just remember, you know, going online and and reading a bunch of like, you know, the typical, the typical crap. Um, and I ended up finding this website, um, that like, it was like the, the diet to have a six pack in six weeks or something like that. And immediately I'm like, names, right? Yeah. (laughs) Um, I, I think it had a more specific name, but I, I don't really remember it at this point. I was, I think I was like 13. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just remember like reading this and being like, that's it. I found it. I found the secret. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be absolutely jacked in like six weeks. This is going to be so easy. And I, Oh, I just remember like <laughs> torturing myself eating like just, I think, I, I think I was eating like celery and, um, and celery and ham and chicken like six times a day and that was it (laughs) where'd the ham come from 
uh, th- so this, this is, this is, uh, what I got from the salad bar, uh, at, uh, at school because, oh, okay. you know, I had to buy my lunch and yep. obviously I'm not going to buy the typical lunch. So I, I would go up to the salad bar and they had like cubed ham that I would, I would just get like a whole like salad tray full. Of. Oh my God. That I would love to have a picture of that. <laughs> My friends, my friends were all looking at me so strangely. They were like, what is wrong with you? Um, and I would, I would actually save some of it and then eat it later in class, like secretly because my, you know, of course you're not supposed to be eating in class. Yeah. Um, but you know, you had to eat six times. Oh, that day. was, that was me in high school too. I used to, so you know, it was, it was hilarious. My, uh, my mom used to have those tiny little, um, like the, like the smallest Tupperware containers, like you could ever imagine, like little circle things, like just enough space to fit a can of tuna. So what I would do is I would drain a can of tuna, put it in there, a little tiny Tupperware dish. And then I would, and this, this looks ridiculous. So then I would have, I would take two of them. One, I would just fill with tuna and the other one I'd fill with green beans. And that would be my lunch. It would be the two smallest Oof. Tupperware containers of your life you'd never seen. And I'd, you know, all my friends would be all going to lunch. They'd be, you know, we'd sit at the lunch table. They'd all be having whatever they're eating. And I'd pull out of my backpack these two tiny little Tupperware containers, one of tuna, one of green, green beans. Nothing on either one of them. And that's what I would eat every day for lunch. Oof. Ouch. I was trying to get ripped, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like, it sounds like we both had pretty similar experiences with that. I feel like, I feel like that's kind of, if you talk to, any given person who, who has a job in the fitness space these days, though, I, I guarantee you that's probably a similar experience. For oh, them. I think we were all obsessed like from the second we started. Yeah. And I, I think that that's, I think that's one of the things that if, if you do want to have a job in this space that you, you need to have at least up to a certain point, like I, I would call like a healthy obsession for it. Um, I always remember like in my, in my classes, one of the things that we discussed during my, my undergraduate for my exercise science degree was exercise addiction. And something that my professor said when we were going over it in, I think it was my first exercise science class, just one exercise science 101. He was just like, just be aware that probably to some degree on paper, it's going to sound like you all have exercise addiction in some way or another. And, and he's just like, and that's okay. But keep in mind, I also have exercise addiction. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I do think that having like a, like a, a healthy degree of obsession with this stuff is one of the most important things because this is a field where a lot of things are always changing and you, you always need to be learning. Um, and I think the day that you and I think that we've got it all figured out is probably the, the day that we should honestly move on to a different career. Yep. I don't know how you feel from that. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, people like to talk about passion. You always hear about passion. You know, oh, this is my passion. Yes, but maybe maybe it's just more an obsession. Is and is that wrong? I know the the connotation is is very is different, but maybe obsession is what it takes. And I know when you say that up front, and we're kind of talking about we're getting into the fitness industry, people might be like, "Oh, well, can you be successful not obsessed with it?" And you can. However, it kind of goes full circle here. What I was talking about about writing the books. When you can find something that you can literally work all the time on and study all the time and just be immersed in 100% and it doesn't feel like a job, doesn't feel like a chore. Now, mind you, there's definitely going to be times when, you know, when, when it is your job, you're going to say, oh, shit, this is, I'm working here. You know, this isn't just free time. This is work. But you can, you can put in a lot more hours when you're obsessed with something because we, all, we, we did this before we were getting paid to do it. You know, so Here. nothing's really yeah. changed. I've talked about this before on the podcast, but nothing's really changed for me in 15 years, really. It just, you know, I, I do this for a career for the last nine or 10. But before that, I was pretty much doing the same stuff. Like I was, even when I was in high school, I was still reading what I thought was good information. It wasn't, but I was still reading about it every chance I got. I was still designing workout programs and helping my friends with their workout programs. Like I was doing just different degrees of it, but I was doing like the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I definitely, I can, I can sympathize with that. Like to this day, I still, uh, do my little brother's training program. Um, he's not so little anymore. You know, he's just turned 22. God, I feel old because I'm, I'm turning 25 this year. Uh, um, I'm turning 28. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. We're, we're all getting old. Scary. I'm 28 years. Lucy's turning five. Oh, geez, man. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> now that. That'll wake you up. Yeah. Wow. 
How she when when you first met her when we lived in Horseheads and you came to train, she must have been she was super little. She was still in her high chair, I believe. Yeah, yeah. She was probably not even two yet. She was probably like one and a half, probably. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. That's 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 scary, man. That's that's wow. That that feels like that feels like it wasn't that long ago, which is crazy. But now that you're like putting that into perspective, Oh yeah, that was, that was forever ago. Yikes. Yeah. Wow. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, roll, rolling that back and like relating that back. I think that if you, if you do have a, a passion for things, like you'll be surprised at how quickly things will go by, you know, just, just getting, getting into it. Um, I, I don't know. I think that with, you know, as long as you, as long as you can find that healthy obsession for, for something like this, it'll be something that you can, you can do for the rest of your life if you so choose. Um, I mean, obviously you're, you're proving that you're one of the, the OGs in this space I at know. this point. It's, it's crazy. Uh, so I'm turning, yeah, I said turning 28, but I started when I was 18, like geez. doing fitness stuff. So it's like pretty much, this is like going to be 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, <laughs> 10 years. That's crazy. That's crazy to think about, man. And so you let's, let, let's go into this. Cause I think this would be good for, for people too. Like when you, when you originally decided that this was something that you wanted to do, like, what was your, what was your thought process? Um, you know, I, I know what mine was like and, and where, where my head was. Um, what, what was that like for you and the people, the people around you as well? Like, how did they, how did they react? How do you like, let's say, let's say we're both talking to somebody who's like, I want to do what you do. I want to be in, in coaching. Mm-hmm. Like what should they be prepared for? And, yeah. and like, so, where should their head be? So kind of to set the stage here, this was 2009, the year I graduated high school. Now, now I gra- I started school early. So I graduated on, I was only 17. So that summer when I was 17 turning, my birthday is in October. So that's when I turned 18. I, um, I started working at a gym when I was 17 that summer. I had always done contracting before that in high school and stuff and did those type of labor jobs. And then, um, you know, I started working at a gym for the first time and I was just doing membership sales and immediately like the manager at the gym was a lady, um, shout out to Brenda. She was like, she like sat me down within like the first couple of weeks. She was like, you are, you're so knowledgeable about this. Like, you should you like it's like a waste to have you sell memberships like you should be doing personal training and she's like you can't get certified until you're 18 but like you just you know more than like everybody here so like how can we set it up so you do personal training so we like set it up to where before i was even certified i started training people i would just have to like write the program and then show it to her and she'd like sign off on it or whatever so i actually started training people before i was even certified i don't even know if that was still in new york or what but i was doing that and uh but at the time online coaches like i said 2009 online coaching was not nearly what it is today like not even the only people I was aware of, like personally me that I was aware of that did it were online bodybuilding coaches. That was it. I was like, I was aware of that. I was like, okay, I do know that people are training people online, like show prep coaches. I was aware of that. So anyway, so fast forward, I must have you know, turned 18 in October. Like sometime during that summer when I was doing personal training at the gym, I started uh, uh, just a blog, just an online blog, started writing some articles. And then, um, you know, I started getting deeper into the personal training side of it. And I recognized something. I was like, man, most of these people that I'm working with, they don't actually need me in the gym with them. I was like, they just need a a program to follow and some accountability. I was like, I feel uh, in my head, I'm just kind of running through this in my head. I'm like, I feel like I could probably do the same thing that the bodybuilding coaches are doing with their athletes with these clients that I'm working with in the gym, I'm like, I could design their training, design their nutrition, have them email me back and forth. And I'm like, why don't, why don't I just try that? So I remember I got like one kid from the gym. And then I remember when, cause I had my blog and I was just writing some articles and pretty much the only people that were reading it were my Facebook friends at the time. You know, I didn't, didn't have any type of real following. Um, started to gain a little bit of traction. And then I posted like one blog. that was like, Hey, if you want a free workout program, free nutrition, free training, everything, just email me. 
So I got like maybe 10 people. So I had like 10 people plus like somebody else and then just started doing it for free. Then I got to maybe like 20 people and I'm like, well, shit, maybe I could charge for this. So then I charged like a very low price. People continued to be interested. And then that's pretty much how it all started. So my thought process going into it wasn't, wasn't to uh, really create like a business or anything. It was just, I was doing personal training in the gym and that's what gave me the idea. Cause I didn't realize, or I, I didn't really think that they needed me. That was pretty much it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's actually, that's actually really smart. I <laughs> see for me, for me, it was more just like, so at the time when I was starting to consider this, I was in school. Yep. Um, as you know, I went to, to Syracuse, very, very near to your, your homestead. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was an English major. And at this point I had done, I had done powerlifting once. Um, I'd been training all through high school, um, just in support of my own athletic endeavors. Um, and I was, we'll call it bodybuilding at the time, yep. even though I wasn't like prepping, but it was, it was on my mind that I was going to do a show. And I actually didn't, did end up doing a show the following year, but I, I, I was convinced I was going to be an English professor. Um, I don't know why specifically. I think I picked English coming out of high school because I, I don't know. I always, I always uh, did well in those classes and the teachers were always really cool. And I, I don't know. I just, I was just very encouraged. So I was just like, cool, I'll, I'll do English. I'll be an English professor. I'll teach people. You know, I like working with people relatively extroverted. So it, it should be a fit. And I just remember I shadowed um, one of my English professors for the day. And his job was so boring. He was just sitting there grading papers most of the day. Like he would teach one or two classes and then that was it. And I was just kind of like, oh, no, this isn't a a good fit for me. And I I just felt very lost because I was just like, well, what am I going to do with an English degree? Um, And then I had actually, my senior year of high school, you had to do a project on the career of your choice. Well, I decided that I was going to do it on exercise science because that was what I didn't want to do. Uh, because I was almost going to like prove it to myself. And that whole time I had, you know, I had done the project. I kind of like knew, you know, I knew the ins and outs of what I needed. And I was just like, you know what, I, let's, let's be real with, be real here. I want to do something in exercise science. Uh, but I, I immediately was like, oh, well, what is my family going to think? So I decided, okay, I'm going to go into physical therapy. And the same thing happened. I went and shadowed a physical therapist and I was just like, oh gosh, they're dealing with all these, these people that are super duper injured and they're, they're kind of depressed. And I'm like, uh, I don't, you know, I, I don't want my reality to be, to be working with that. And so I finally was real with myself. I was like, you know what? You have a passion for, for lifting your, you know, you, you clearly want to get into this sort of a thing. So, um, I had already been watching, you know, people like you, I, I at that point had found, uh, Nick Wright, who had led me to, uh, besides who had led me to Matt Ogus, who had led me to 3D muscle journey. And I remember watching Eric Helms's videos at the time. And thinking like, wow, this guy is an online coach. Um, and, and that's what he does. Like he coaches people in bodybuilding. And so, so shout out, shout out Dr. Helms for, for being the original inspiration there. But I was just like, you know what, whatever it takes, I'm going to, I'm going to get my degree in exercise science and I'm going to move towards that. And that was kind of where I was. Um, and I didn't know how I was going to do it. And I, especially when I told my family, that's what I, I was going to do. They were like, Okay. Yep. Oh. Well, well, that brings up a good point. So when, um, so like when I started getting some clients, like I went all in, like anybody who knows me, like I don't dabble with shit. Like I either do something or I don't do it. Like I'm not like a dabbler. So I, once I started getting some clients, I was like, well, shit, like this is what I'm going to do now. So I like quit the gym. Like I like just quit working at the gym. I quit doing, cause I, I was still doing a little bit of contracting stuff too. Cause I had a really good, really good relationship with the, the guy I worked for. And I did a lot of stuff with him. Stopped doing that. Pretty much just said, Oh, you know what? And, and, and I was in college. So it was like, Hey, the only, my only means of income is going to be this. Even in the summers, like I was just kind of, I'm focusing on hunt fitness. That's what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, my, my parents, like, trust me, my, my mom, my stepdad, they're super supportive, but they were not supportive at this at all. Like 100%. I think in, in retrospect, like if you talk to them now, they'd, they'd probably like try to smooth the edges. Like, oh no, we don't, we always knew you'd be successful. We always knew you'd make it work. I'm like, I might be remembering it wrong, but 
I'm not. <laughs> they were they were pretty much they drew like a hard line in the sand. It was like, you know, you're wasting your time. This is a, you know essentially a joke. Like this isn't going to work. Like nobody's doing this. Like they they would have rather seen me do anything else besides work on hunt fitness for my business. Like trust me, they would have they would have rathered me literally anything else. Like any other job, which in retrospect seems silly, but at the time I, I was second guessing myself. I was like, maybe this is, maybe they're right. You know, I was like, maybe they are right. But I just felt like, I don't know. I just, I, I have a lot of belief in myself to begin with. So I just was like, man, I just feel something like I'm going to make this work. But then it was working. I was like, man, I just feel like this, if, if it really was a waste of time, why am I getting clients? And why is this kind of, already starting to to show some promise and then i you know speaking back to the the lady who was the manager at the gym i worked at i still remember this conversation i had with her because actually i think i like maybe reached out to her after i already stopped working at the gym and because she knew what i was doing and i was like you know i don't know i might have to stop doing this because it seems like my parents think it's a joke and, and I wasn't making much money. So I'm like, maybe I would be better off just working a different job. And I still remember what she told me. She's like, she's like, Kyle, she's like, she's like, I'm not, I'm not just saying this. She's like, but I think you'll be a millionaire if you just stick with this. And I was like, oh. like, seriously, that's what she said to me. I was like, I still remember that those like those exact words. Cause it was like the first time probably anybody ever has said that. And I was like, Holy shit. Like, really? And she's like, she's like, yeah, like you're 18, 17, 18, like, you, you know, everything you have going on, like from a knowledge standpoint, and then from your work ethic, like if you just keep doing this, that's like, that's really going to be something. It's like, wow. And I think that was just enough that I needed to say, you know what? I owe it to myself to at least try it to at least just, it's almost like what people say about training it's like when you feel like quitting just be like okay well i'll quit tomorrow like that type of thing like then the next day like well i don't want to do it anymore but uh, i'll quit tomorrow so it was kind of like my mindset like you know what maybe it's not the long-term plan but for right now it's my plan like this month i'll do it for this month and then i'll you know i'll quit next month and get a real job you know and then that's pretty much the mindset i had all the way through college like i was just like hey i'll do it for this month it'll probably, I'm like, it'll probably all stop next month. Like I'll, I'll lose all my clients. Like I'm not going to make any money and I'll quit and get a different job like next month. And then I kept doing that and doing that. And then the, my last semester, you know, I think the, I don't know, maybe like two months before graduation, you know, like every week we're all kind of sending out our resumes for, you know, cause graduation's coming up. And I realized that was like when it first hit me, I'm like, Hmm, I don't really need to send out a resume. Like I, I, I kind of, kind of have a job I, i'll at least try this i guess i guess this is my job that was the first time it was like okay well i guess this isn't my college job this is like i guess this is my career yeah yeah <laughs> i um i remember for me it was it was a little bit of a different situation so i knew what i wanted to do i just didn't know how the path that i was going to take um and i I was confident in myself, but I, I don't think I, I had quite the confidence to start something on my own because at this point, this is beyond the dawn of social media. And I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, I am, I am a very small fish in a, a very large ocean. Um, and plus I, I just didn't feel like with you, you had all that personal training experience. Like I had, you know, I had helped a few of my friends, my, my brother, that, that but that was about it. Like, I, I just mm -hmm. didn't feel that. So, um, it also so happened that I needed an internship for my degree. Uh, and I think I've, I've told you this part before, but, uh, I, I knew, so this was post my post bodybuilding show. And I knew that I didn't necessarily want to coach strictly bodybuilding. And I was, this is kind of right when powerlifting was becoming popular again because raw nationals had just become a thing. Um, so I, you know, I'd seen him on, on 3DMJ and on uh, Matt Ogus's vlogs. So I reached out to Bryce Lewis. Um, and I was just like, look, hey, I need a degree or a, de a degree. Yeah, I do need a degree. Um, <laughs> I, I need a degree, man. <laughs> Can you give me uh, one? <laughs> I, need a, I need an internship for my degree and I, I really want to do what you guys do. Um, you know, I have a background with 3D Muscle Journey because at that point, Eric had, had been helping me out. I was just like, I really admire you guys. What do you think about having an intern? And 
for some reason, Bryce was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, so we, we had had a Skype or two, um, just to kind of talk over like, you know, what my, my background was like and what I was looking for out of it. Um, and it was, you know, from there, it just kind of began to, to seem roll. Like I, I had, I had a little bit of a personal trainer job in, in the gym, um, that was kind of going on at the same time where I was kind of training some of the professors. So I, I kind of like knew how to talk to people, knew how to cue things, um, that sort of deal. But you know, this was, that was like a whole different world for me was, was, you know, working with someone online. Um, and especially someone who, even though I had started powerlifting at 13 was still quite amateur in, in powerlifting at the time. Um, it was, it was a lot of, it was a lot of hard work, um, kind of learning the craft and, and figuring things out. So the confidence as a coach didn't really come as quickly. I'm not that I'm saying it, it did for you. Cause I'm sure you probably to this day are still like, eh, am I, you know, every so often you're like, I don't know if I did that right, but I think we all do at some point, yeah. but the, the actual confidence in it, you know, came a little bit later. Um, but just, you know, that steam rolled into, into working with TSA over the course of the rest of my college career, um, in conjunction with starting my own thing. Um, I remember, I remember I kind of did something similar to you, but it, I went in, I went into a Facebook group and I was just like, um, Hey, I'm starting, I'm starting online coaching and I want to take on two athletes completely for free. So the first one checked in with me once and then I never heard from him again. But the second one, uh, shout out, shout out Nicole. I don't know if she still listens to my, my stuff. Um, but she, uh, she stuck with me all the way through into the, the TSA days and she gave me a shot. It was just like, you know, Hey, sure. Why not? Uh, and she ended up, I remember the, one of the proudest moments in coaching was when she, uh, deadlifted, uh, 315 for the first time when, when we started working together, she could deadlift 135. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, so that was, that was kind of where it was for me. And as I got to my senior year of college, I'm like, okay, so I've been working with for, for TSA for a long time. There's, there was currently an open coaching position because Reed Frisbee, who had been one of the coaches had just left. Um, and it was raw nationals and Bryce and I were actually rooming together. And I remember this is the night after he won his first national championship. So we had all That's celebrated perfect and we time came. to maybe throw out an ask. Yeah, you know, it. you know, it. And I was going to be graduating, you know, that, that spring. And I remember just my hands were shaking like crazy. And I was like, I was like, basically was just like, Hey Bryce, you know, like I really love working with you guys. I'm going to be graduating. I, I, you know, what do you, what do you think about bringing me on? And I mean, the rest is kind of, kind of history. And then from there, I've just, you know, been, been rolling on forward. Um, I'm proud humble, humble brag here. Maybe not so humble. I, I trained my first IPF world champion this year. Um, awesome. my, my, uh, one of my guys who I've been working with for a while, Kirill from, uh, from Northern Ireland. He, he, uh, won the sub junior 93s over at worlds. I was lucky enough to be there to help coach him too. So that was a really cool experience. Um, and it's just, it's so cool how quickly like those, those chains of events have, have worked together and brought me to this point. And I'm sure you, I'm sure you feel the same. Oh, hundred percent. You know, the one thing about your story that I think is important to highlight is you took, and I remember cause we were friends during the time, obviously. And I remember talking to you about it is you took the intern internship very seriously, mm. you know? Absolutely. And I, I don't want to make a generalization, but I think that's somewhere that a lot of people fall short, you know, because let's face it, they're, they're probably not getting paid. They're probably having to get money somewhere else. They're, they're probably like getting to a point where, God, man, is this worth it? And you know, Hey, well, it is going to be worth it if you actually take it seriously and execute and do a really good job because it can lead to something. And even if it didn't lead, you know, another thing that, cause you, you did take it seriously and did a very good job with them is I bet you, even if Bryce didn't have an opening spot and he couldn't actually bring you on, he probably would have helped you get a spot somewhere, you know, or at least helped you get going. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a lot of it is just when, whatever you have, just do as best as you possibly can with what's in front of you. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think, um, I think another, another point you can draw from that too is make sure you have a good mentor. You know, if, if this is something that you're serious about, find, find somebody who's willing to help you out. Um, which to be fair, you know, that, that might be hard, but I'm, I'm sure there's somebody out there that knows more than you at the very least, just ask questions. Uh, because I think that's super important. I mean, I'm not sure how you feel about this, but 
my exercise science degree didn't exactly provide me with all the tools that I need to, to work with the individuals that I do. Definitely um, not. Yeah. So it's, it's just basically a fancy piece of paper. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, uh, it just, to me, like it, mentorship was like the biggest thing that, that put me in the position that I'm in today. Um, so I, if I can, if somebody can have one takeaway from this podcast, it's just like, if you want to be, if this is something that you want to do, find somebody who's willing to, to teach you what they know, um, and continue to do that throughout your career. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah. I think it's, well, I think it's almost like a cheat code, you know? And that's one thing that I, when I first started, I wish I would have tried harder to, to do is, is look for a mentor. Cause it could have saved me a lot of time initially, um, having to go through a lot of things that, you know, because I didn't really have any direction of what I was doing. It was kind of just going about it on the fly. Um, you know, there's a lot of growing pains. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, there are other things that I, you know, that I, I still wish that I could, you know, go back and, and do differently. But I, I think that part of, part of growing as an individual is, is making mistakes and learning from them as well. Of course. Um, so if anything, it's, it's, you know, that you just have to, sometimes you just have to make those mistakes and, and learn from them too. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm so thankful to, to be in the position that I'm in and, and now, you know, just having expanding, expanding duties every single day. Um, now I'm, I'm actually doing sort of the reverse of what you did. I'm here, here in San Diego now I'm, I'm you know, taking on some in-person clients, which is cool. Cause I haven't done that in a while. Um, just decided for a change of pace. Um, Kristen Dunsmore, who is also yeah. from, from Syracuse lives out here and we're going to be, uh, starting a powerlifting club team here, uh, at, at convoy for, for new lifters. So that's going to be really cool. That's awesome. Uh, being able to coach powerlifting in person. Like I said, I've been lucky enough to, to be an assistant coach, uh, for team USA for a couple of years now, which is really, really cool and technically great Britain as well. But, um, just cause you know, I, coaching my, my athlete who's been to worlds. I don't know. You're, you're not, you're technically not supposed to do that. So sh- um, hopefully no one's listening to this. Yeah. Hopefully none of the, the IPF overlords are, are listening right now. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Over, overall, I think that the, the journey to, to being in the position that you are in it, no matter what, there's no straight and narrow path. I just, I don't know. I hope people pick up a few things that, uh, that would help them if that's kind of their goal. Yeah. Well, and I think we, we definitely should dig into the topic of, you know, the landscape, the current landscape. I mean, 2019 online coaching, because I know I've talked about this before in the podcast, but I, I mean, I, I struck when the iron was hot. Like when I started on fitness, like it was probably, probably the best time to start an online coaching because it was, uh-huh. it was late. It, it was late enough to where people, it, a lot of people didn't understand it completely, but they knew enough about it to give you a chance to explain, but it was still early enough to where a lot of people weren't doing it. Like it was, you know, well, there were very few people doing it. So especially in a general sense, like working with, like I said, a lot of times it was just bodybuilding contest prep coaches. I mean, that's pretty much it. So if you just want it, if you wanted to gain strength, if you wanted just kind of just to build muscle, lose fat, like not really compete or anything. Like you didn't really have an option. So I kind of filled that for people, you know, so I kind of got lucky in a sense, but and I, I kind of say the same thing is, so I started, you know, it's kind of gone full circle here. I, I, I'm writing books now, but I've always loved writing. Like even in, in high school, I always loved writing and I just kind of wrote on weird projects. Like I would just like write like random shit all the time. So if I would have, I mean, I was too young, but like in probably if I would have started hunt fitness, like my actual like blog side of things, maybe like five years sooner, it would have been kind of the, cause that's when, that's when fitness blogs were really popular about five years before I started, like probably 2005, 2006, you saw a lot of people blow up with, with fitness blogs, like writing articles on their site. They grew like almost like the, the YouTube boom of the earth, like 2012 and 13 when a bunch of people blew up on youtube in like 2005 and 2006 a bunch of fitness people blew up on just writing articles so like i missed that like when i started writing articles it was blogging was already starting to go down but i guess what i'm trying to say is it's all like there there is a timing element to it yeah i i agree um the the space seems to be well, it doesn't seem to be, it, it is very saturated these days. Um, 
I, I have to say like, it's, it's one of those things where somebody, you know, they, they place third in their, their local powerlifting meet. And then they're like, DM me for online coaching in there. Three spots left. Yep. Oh yeah. That's, that's the, that's the big one. They're always just like, I've only got two spots left in my, in my roster to fill. And it's, uh, I, I see it on every Instagram story. I swear. Um, I always want to just come like your roster's not full. <laughs> Which, yeah. That, How many people what, what, are you capping at, at five? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could, I mean, could be, yeah. um, and it, yeah, but it's, it's definitely, and it also seems to be the case that, I, I don't know why this is the case too, because it's, it only seems like it's in the fitness industry. Um, that no matter what, if somebody is, you know, strong or if they have a six pack or whatever, they are automatically an expert in everyone's eyes. And that could not be the furthest thing from the truth. Um, like some people are just, you know, super genetically gifted and they could, they'll get their, you know, even if they have a super terrible training program or a super terrible diet, they'll get there anyway. Um, and it's just like, I don't know. It, it, this, the space in general is, is definitely harder, a lot harder to enter now. Um, if you, if you don't have, you know, prior, prior reputation or, uh, just insane strength or physique or both. Um, and that's unfortunate, but I think, my best advice for cutting through that is just to kind of do some of the, the same things that, that we did is, is just, you know, generally put in the work and, and become an expert and the people will come to you that it might not be quickly, but if you really are passionate about it and that's something that you want to do, you just kind of have to pursue with that. Even if it's not necessarily your full-time gig right away. Um, it's a tough industry to be in for sure. Cause it, I know it can be, even for me, like, you know, have being lucky enough to have a decent number of clients. It can be, it can be discouraging seeing, you know, individuals who, who again, maybe just started powerlifting, like having all these, all these training clients and, and, you know, having done two meets, whereas I've done, you know, 12, you know, just from an experience standpoint, but just because this person has a higher total than me, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure you, you probably have experienced the same as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's almost like, and I feel like where the, where the, the current online coaching landscape is, it's almost like a death by a thousand cuts. Like there's, there's a lot of the people who are just starting out. Yeah. yeah some of them are successful, but for the most part, I, I feel like they're just kind of like picking up scraps, but that can be still damaging to the more experienced coaches too, because Hey, I'm like, it, they're, they're taking people that are looking for coaching. Um, but my best advice is the same as yours. I mean, just become an expert. Like that's, that's pretty much the answer always like just become really, really good because two things. One, if you're really, really good at something, somebody's always going to be willing to pay you for it always. And then at least I like to think this is the cream rises to the top, you know? So yeah, it's a muddy landscape down here, but if you become better, you were going to, you're going to elevate yourself. Now, now people, we get into the details. I mean, people have to know about you. So there is like a, a marketing element to it, um, which, which, is, which is tough too, because I think a lot of people think of just social media, which is the easiest way, but that's so saturated too. So not yeah. only is coaching saturated, but then the, the actual act of trying to put yourself out there is saturated as well. But people come and go, like people lose interest. Like this is, this is almost a battle of attrition. Like people there's, there's so many, I've seen so many people come and go over the years. Um, but Hey, it's like, you, you have to be, I don't know. You gotta, it seems cliche. Oh, gotta be think big picture long term, but you kind of do like, you almost have to start out when you're starting out. It's not going to be sunshine and, and rainbows. Like you're gonna, you're gonna have to work another job. You're going to have to just, it has to be a side gig. Like if you're starting in 2019, you have to start it as a side gig, but just, it's going to happen. And, but I mean, Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. If you enjoy it, then Hey, it's a couple extra bucks here. You know, what, what's the big deal? I and mean, if it never turns into anything, then it doesn't, but it's a, a side gig. And then eventually, Hey, if you do a really good job, maybe it does turn into something you got you, you have to, you have to start to ever have that opportunity though. It's like, you got to be in it to win it. Like you actually have to take the action to start, moving towards your goals or the same as fitness you have to yeah you have to start yeah well yeah i was actually just gonna say um 
uh, there's a, I think there was a, a Christian Guzman video. I, I, I remember I used to watch his videos all the time back in the day. Um, I actually still have an email on like my old junk email, uh, from him, uh, because I, I asked him a question back in the day, and he actually personally replied. Like this is when he first got started. Um, I, I got to stop you for a second. This is this is funny. Ashlyn will tell you the same story. So so my wife will actually she'll she'll back me up on this. So <laughs> when uh, this probably just tells everyone how old I am or how long I've been doing this. But when he was first starting, we were like at the Arnold, and I can't remember what year this was. Maybe like 2013. I can't remember. It was like when he was like first starting to make YouTube videos, but he had already, it might've been 2014 even, like he had already gained a lot of traction, but like I've never really been into watching YouTube videos, like fitness YouTube, which seems crazy because I used to make fitness YouTube videos, but I just never really watched fitness YouTube. Now podcasts, I listen to podcasts all the time. So that's why probably why this medium seems to work better for me. But um, anyway, so I never really watched YouTube videos. So we're at the Arnold and I I was talking to somebody and like Christian Guzman, he was standing like right next to me, like waiting to like introduce himself to say hi. And uh, I like completely blew him off. (laughs) Like completely (laughs) off. Uh, I can't remember. Like we were going to do something and um, yeah, I don't know. Wasn't good. Dang. That sucks, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, gosh, shit, yeah. I, I, uh, I actually, I forget what year it was. Um, but it was the year that he, he came and hung out at Matt Ogus and, uh, Chris Lovato's booth. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how it ended I think up it was happening. That actually probably was the year. I think it was okay. that year. It was 2014. Yeah, Cause I think it was at, I think I was talking to Matt. Literally. I yeah. think I was talking to Matt Ogus and like Christian said something. And I was like, Oh, cool. Hey, nice to meet you or something. I never, like, I just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So th- I don't know how it ended up happening, but I ended up having dinner with him, uh, Nikki Blackadder, Chris Jones, Vince Garza, and Max Tuning that night. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I still have no idea how that ended up happening. But if you go back and look at uh, either Chris Jones or or um, Christian's vlogs from that Arnold, I am in both of those videos. Oh, man. Um, which is so crazy to think about. Um, anyway, uh, gosh, I kind of lost my train. I thought I, know, I, I interrupted you and now I screwed up the whole, whole oh, no, thought here. No, so it's a, it's a Christian use my video. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So the, the, there was something that he said that I, that always kind of stuck with me that I really like, and it's the secret to success is starting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, I think that that's a really good way to live your life. You know, if you, if you never, start the thing that you want the most. It's just, it's never going to happen. You know, if you are, if you're always putting that off, uh, and that's, that comes from me who is is a self-proclaimed procrastinator. Um, I almost want to tattoo that on my arm just so I'm constantly remind reminded of it. But, uh, I think that if, if that's something that people want, that no matter like how daunting and scary it is, you just, you just kind of have to go after it, you know? Um, and yeah, like there's, you mentioned it might be like a side hustle, but like off the start, um, one of the guys here at Convoy, uh, his name is, uh, Donald. He's the, he's the head weightlifting coach here. And, you know, he like for the longest time was like a personal trainer and he like maybe trained a few weightlifters at a time and he drove Uber and like all this stuff. And now like he's, he's the head weightlifting coach and he monitors the weightlifting club here, which, which has like 12 or 13 people that he gets to like, you know, watch and influence their training and um, you know, they're going to be like going to some weightlifting meets as a team for the first time. And, and he, he got to shadow some coaches at youth nationals, which was up in Anaheim, uh, about a month back. Like, so I, I use him as an example as like, just saying like, yeah, it might not necessarily be something that starts off quickly, but you know, if you really stick to it, like, so for the longest time, Amber was actually uh, Donald's roommate. So I would you know, I would, I would see, I would see him all the time and he'd just be constantly like listening to stuff about weightlifting on, on podcasts or watching videos or just reading books. Uh, and that's a perfect example of if you really have a passion for it and you stick to it, great things will happen. Well, and I think that actually speaks to, you actually have to honestly be passionate about it and not just like pretend that you are. I think sometimes people tell themselves that they are you know, cause they yeah. want to be It's like, Oh man, it'd be cool to be an online coach. It'd be, it'd be cool to be a coach. Well, okay. yeah, it would be if, if you enjoy doing it, but are you, are you, are you that person? Like, it's not, 
it's not that it would be cool to be a, a, a coach. It's, are you that person that is willing to actually get good at it and, and put yourself into position to actually have clients? Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you that person who like for the longest time while I was in New York, I would, I would give up my weekends. You know, I would pay money to stay in hotels. I would go to, to my clients meets and handle them for free. Um, you know, I would like, I, I'll often like, even to this day, I'll still, I'll still pay out of pocket to go to some bigger meets to help handle people. Um, and I do, I do charge to handle people now, but that's literally like, I don't make any money from that because I, I always end up breaking even, um, you know, and I do that because I think that it's always important to kind of just, you know, be in the soup and, and be, be learning and just doing the thing. Um, which is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm planning on doing nationals in 2020. It's just like, you know, I have the strength to do it. I, I should do the thing, you know, um, that, and also the Arnold qualifying totals. I don't know if you've seen them are so much lower all of a sudden. Than oh, like, are they? Oh yeah. Oh, they're so low. Uh, the, the, uh, the IPF score that you need to do the, the lower category meet, the, the raw challenge is only like 685, which comes around. It's like an average of like a 440 Wilkes, which is oh, okay. down by like, I think like 25 Wilkes points or something like that from the previous year. So well, yeah, I think last year, cause I qualified for that. I think it was, I'm trying to think what it was, but I think it was higher than that, that you needed, I think you needed like a 480 Wilkes or something. Yeah. Um, so, and they also, they also changed the schedules a little bit more favorable now. Um, so they, the raw challenge would always be on Friday and then the pro American would be on Saturday. And then they have that new battle of the regions thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was on Sunday. Well, now they flipped it around where the battle of the regions is on Friday Raw challenges on Saturday, pro Americans on Sunday. So, like, if I need to travel, for example, that's a lot more favorable to be able to travel at the end of the week and mm -hmm. you know be able to do that. So, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm I'm still a ways away from that being a reality because I I have to qualify for nationals, do nationals, qualify for the Arnold, do the Arnold. But um, I don't know. I, I just I think that I think that being a part of of that space is important as somebody who, and that, that's that's another thing that I think people can take away. It's just like you, if you're not doing the thing continually, you're probably going to get left behind in some of the practical stuff that you need to know as a coach. Yep. People get um, out of touch. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it, like you, if you have never had to sit down and run number, like not, not that every single online coach is going to be doing this, but if you've never had to sit down and run the numbers for final deadlifts to know what you need to put in for your athletes, final deadlifts to make sure that they win, then you, you know, you, 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 that's something that you, you need to take off your box before you can actually coach people properly. Yep. You know, um, it's, I don't know, the, pra the, pra the practical side of things I think is something that is very underrated these days as well, because a lot of, ever since the dawn of the internet, everything's like, Oh, evidence-based this evidence-based that PubMed this PubMed that, uh, and you know, there is at, at the base level, anecdotal evidence and, and experience is the first thing that creates all of that in the first place. That's, that's where the ideas come from. And I, I think people just undervalue that a ton these days. It's just like, Oh, well, I know all these concepts and concepts are important, but it's just like, have you ever actually done that? Yeah. You know, honestly, I've been on a big experience kick like the last year. I mean, you listen to the podcast, you probably heard me. I, I bring this up all the time and I'm in my head. I'm like, is, is it me just because like I've been in the game for a while. So now I'm like, Oh, I'm using like the experience piece is like, Oh, cause I have experience now it's important. But the other element is I just feel like kind of like what you said, it, but on a push for evidence base, which is great. Definitely need to. Science is great. I love it. But there is something for experience. And, and really, there's no substitute for experience because I, there's just there, – when you have to actually do it, it's different than what's on paper. You know, on paper things – a lot of things make sense on paper. But in practice, a lot of things don't make sense. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's a, um, there's a paper that I remember reading, uh, just about, I think it was, I think it was on male bench pressing. Um, I read this when I was in college and it was something like to, it, it was something to the tune of, um, it, it was on frequency and they, the paper basically said that, uh, it was useless for males to bench more than once a week because they would never be able to recover from it. And just thinking about that now, it's just like, if I would have listened to something like that and, and, and gone on thinking like, Oh, this is, this is a scientific paper that, you know, has statistics to prove this. Like if I would have gone on 
thinking that for the longest time, what sort of coach would I would have, I have been, you know, it's just like, there's so many things that like on paper that the study, the study showed all this and it, it had sound statistics, you know, the, the, the uh, number of subjects was kind of low, but Mm -hmm. you know, that's most exercise science papers. And it's just like on paper, yeah, all this looks good. But then if I, if I would go to do that with any given individual, most of them would probably end up getting weaker. Yep. Um, So yeah, having, having that experience is is such a key thing. And and again, like I mentioned before, you're, you're going to have to go out and maybe make a few mistakes uh, like that in order to, in order to gain that experience too. Um, I've definitely had moments where, you know, I've tried something out with an athlete and it hasn't really worked out. Even to this day, I'll sometimes experiment with athletes if they're, if they're up to it and we think maybe we can change their performance. And sometimes it hasn't worked out. And I've had to say, you know what, I was, I was, I was wrong. Nothing, nothing ventured, nothing, nothing gained in this case. And we'll just move on and do something else. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know if, if you're quite so adventurous with your, with your own athletes, but I don't know. I guess I could give a practical example. Like we tried, we tried, you know, be- an athlete who was benching four times a week. We tried benching five times a week because mm-hmm. there's been some recent data on that, that Greg Knuckles has put out. Um, and he's always kind of had a sticky bench. So we were just like, let's try five times a week. And it ended up getting a little bit worse. So we were just like, oh, okay. You know, we, we backed up off that immediately and just kind of resumed normal training. Well, I think it's good to, always be willing to step outside the box a little bit, you know, just about everything. Just be like, okay, well, yeah, here's, here's the data we have. We can try something. It may not work, but it might work. Let's give it a shot. I, I've talked about this before recently too. It's like, I think sometimes the more information we have, we start to think things are just all black and white. It's like, oh, well, this is either going to work or it's not like there's, there's no gray area. We have evidence that says it's going to work. It's going to work. Or we have evidence that says there's better ways. So because there's better ways, that means this way doesn't work. When it's all just a, a sliding scale. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, pendulum, the pendulum always swings, as, uh, as I think Bryce uh, has said in recent days. It always, it always swings back and forth. Um, and it will actually back and forth and sideways in every other direction, honestly. Yeah, it changes. Everything changes. You have to change with it. Cause you don't want to be out of touch. Like you said, well, even, even going back to what you said about it's good to be in the thing. I, uh, I had Joe Ken on the podcast recently. He came down and, and trained with me. He's the head strength coach for the Carolina Panthers. Dude's been a strength coach for like 35 years and we worked out and he still gets after it, man. Like, I don't know how he has to be close to 60, but he's still he's like probably mid fifties. He's still getting after it hard and like trying new things. And like, he was telling me about all the people he's been, been following and likes their stuff. And, and I was like, yeah, it's like, you know, that's, that's how you stay successful in, in anything. But, you know, especially the strength, strength fields is, you know, just, it'd just be easier for him to say, Oh, I've been coaching NFL athletes for, for 30 years. I think I know what I'm I doing. Know what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, I know what I'm doing. Like I don't need to be following online people and, and trying to find new methods. You know, it'd be easy for him to do that. Yeah, it would, especially in, in that awesome position. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think my friend Andrew Stone actually works under him. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Cause he just got a job at strength conditioning with the Panthers, if I'm not mistaken. So small world, small world. Um, We're all connected. Yeah. Yeah, and so, always, always <laughs> a few probably degrees. like one degree of of separation from like almost everybody. Oh yeah, for sure. In the fitness industry, I, I mean, yeah, it's amazing how many times like I see like somebody that I know with like this person who's so much bigger in the industry, and it's just like, oh well, maybe maybe I can you know build that bridge someday. That sort of <laughs> deal. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I don't know. I guess I guess my last point for anybody else who's who's listening thinking like what do i what do i want to do or what do i what should i do to become a coach is more so than anything it's just uh, make connections you know yeah i think that's that's a big thing like for me um like even i remember even just like reaching out to you for the first time because you were you were you know close to me that was, I mean, that was still a little bit like nerve wracking, but it's, it's amazing how, especially well, in like the second age, time you reached out to me. Cause remember the first time you reached out, I actually set you up with what a nutrition plan in like 2000. Yeah. Yeah. 11 yeah. or something. That's true. Yeah. The very first person to do that for me. <laughs> I think I still have the, I think I still have the document somewhere on one of like my old computers. 
Oh, that has Somewhere. to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm willing to bet it's, it's still pretty sound. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you, at least if you like broke down the macros and everything, which uh-huh. I'm pretty sure you, you did at the time. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, I, even just like reaching out and being like, Hey, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm local. We should train together. Like all, all that, like just that in general is always like kind of nerve wracking. And I, I think that's, I think people sometimes see these individuals who are, you know, ha- have a big following or, or, or super strong is like unapproachable. Um, and I think more so than anything for me over the course of my career, reaching out to people and saying like, Hey, I'm, I'm so-and-so I'm a, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan or I admire your work or whatever. And, and just, you know, being able to ask people a couple of questions or, you know, even in some cases being able to hang out with them or, or get me- mentored with them, train with them, anything has been something that has kind of framed my entire career because it's made, it's just made things more fun. I've gotten to learn so much more. Uh, and I think that if, if you're going to be successful in the fitness industry, learning from other people is, is so key. So just try to make as many connections as you can because you never know where they'll go. Yeah. I mean, just the networking elements, huge. And you got to have an abundance mentality to effectively do that. There's, there's a lot of people, I think sometimes people get caught up and they're like, Oh, I don't want to reach out to someone else because they're competing against me or, or something. It's like, I mean, should people even have that opinion on about podcasting? It's like, Oh, why would you have so-and-so on and let them promote their shit? It's like, well, I don't even think about that. Like, you know, that's never been a thought of mine. There's an abundance mentality. Anybody who I bring on, I just want to have a conversation with them. I'm never even thinking about like, Oh, I, who's, the, who's this going to benefit more? Like it's not in my thought process. Yeah, I agree, man. I think, I think that that's, that's the, the best way to go about it. Um, like I, I just, yeah, I'll, I'll never, I'll never know the, the bounds that I can, I can take a, a new friendship that I, I happen to make when I'm, I'm in this industry, but it's, it's so cool now, like be, being at the, the world level, um, at, at IPF worlds, like I'm, I'm lucky enough to now count some people from other countries as friends. So you know, like if I'm in that country, I can always just hit them up. Like just even just small things like that. It's, it's the coolest thing. It's you so know, another cool. thing too is online coaching, a lonely, lonely job. If you're, if you're not willing to reach out. I agree. I absolutely it's do. It's not talked about much. Yeah. It's uh, it's so like I, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm at, I'm at that convoy right now rather than at home working. Um, you know, it's, I, I think that, one of the, the biggest things for, for me moving to, to California that's been nice has been being able to just have a reason to constantly get out of the house. Cause before when I was at home, it was literally just, Oh, well, I'm going to go train. Cool. Now I'm going to be in my, my basement office for the next six, seven hours doing work. Mm-hmm. Cool. What a life. What, uh, what'd your parents say about you moving across the country? So I, I still, don't, I still don't quite think my mom is, is over it. I mean, they're, they're a little bit more comfortable because, you know, again, another awesome function of my job is I've been, you know, I've been able to come out here and, and see Amber a bunch. Um, so they, I think they were a little bit more comfortable with it. Cause I'd be out here like a few weeks at a time. Yeah. You were out there quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't necessarily think that, uh, <laughs> I don't think my mom's completely over it. it. It feels very real because my car just got here, um, from, from Pennsylvania. So now I can kind of like, you know, drive places on my own rather than, um, driving around with Amber all the time. And it's, it's, it's cool. It's, uh, I don't know. I, I I don't think my mom will ever quite get used to it, but, uh, I'm, uh, their 25th wedding anniversary was, uh, two days or three days ago at this point. Um, so I am, uh, as a, as a surprise, uh, flying them out here, uh, later in the, in the fall. Um, so that'll I feel be like your mom may listen to this. <laughs> oh no, she. I mean, she already. She oh, already she knows. knows. I already, oh, yeah. I already. I already surprised. Like, like I, I surprised them for their. Oh, oh, okay. I was gonna say. I was like, I feel like your mom listens to the stuff that you're on. She does. She does. <laughs> um, but yeah, she. So, so that'll be nice. Um, I'm also hopefully looking forward to getting some of my brothers and sisters out here. We just had uh, Amber's sister Samira come come in and uh, and and Serena as well. So it was cool to have all of them. Her mom as well. So, awesome, man! Cool, cool. Yeah. How can people find you? 
uh, as always, you can, you can hit me up, uh, on Instagram. It's, it's Joe underscore TSA. Um, you can also, uh, again, starting in mid to late August, depending on when all the editing gets done, uh, check me out on YouTube, just type in Joe Stanek and it'll pop up. There's what, uh, actually- not to interrupt you. I was just gonna say, what, um, what do you have planned? Like, what do you, what kind of videos you want to make? So, um, I'm, I'm going to start off softly with just something easy, like a training blog. Um, but I really, I want to kind of step up and have some more informative powerlifting content because I, I don't think that that, that space is covered well on, uh, on YouTube at this point. Um, so I'm, I'm, if people are interested in some of the nuances of, of programming, um, you know, basics behind that, uh, maybe just the way that I personally do things, um, I'm going to have some, some different videos on things like that. Uh, definitely technique breakdown because a lot of my education in, in exercise science kind of prepared me to, to work with individuals in correcting technique. So, um, some different things in my, my own philosophies on, on squatting, benching and deadlifting. Um, heck maybe even, I'll, maybe I'll even break down the proper way to do a lat pull down because a lot of people do those incorrectly. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can, you can find that on YouTube just by typing in Joe Stanek. There's some, there's some old videos up there right now, um, from my days when I was a TSA intern. Uh, so I that will probably not be, not quite be reflective of what I'll be doing, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some old whiteboard videos. Yeah. There might be some new whiteboard videos. I just, it's got a whiteboard for my office, so shit. Maybe you know what? Maybe maybe seeing uh, old Joey get on YouTube, maybe it'll motivate me to get back on YouTube. Maybe, man. You uh, you gotta, gotta gotta yeah, you gotta gotta pull a pull a Jeff Nippert or a Christian and get get a camera guy to follow you around. All I know, time. that's what I need. I need a camera guy. I just need Lucy to be old enough to be able to do that, and she just be my camera girl. <laughs> I feel like I feel like she could. I feel like she could. She could handle it. You she could might you be could able to. Her. She might, she just, to. You might have to get her like a stool that she carries around so she could like be at the right height. But other than that, I think she could handle it. Yeah. Well, she's already like saying how she wants to go to the gym. Nice. Yeah. That's like her. That's that, it's been like this, like for, for whatever reason, like the past week, that's been like her thing. She's just been like asking me, like, when can I go to the gym? When? And I'll say, when you get bigger. And she said, like, when am I going to get bigger? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm probably like 12 or 13. You can go to the gym. <laughs> I don't know. When do they let, when do they let kids go to the gym? <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe she'll, maybe she'll kind of be like Mark Lobeliner's kids. Have you ever, you ever seen them? Oh yeah. Yeah. They, get after it. they go, they go nuts. His little like seven or eight well, year I mean, old. Dad's Mark Lobeliner. I mean, yeah, true, true. Um, I, I yeah. have some, man, I have some, I have some Mark stories. People, people, I, I actually was like Mark and I were pretty close. I actually ran machine muscle for a little bit. I was editor in chief of machine muscle, his old online magazine. So I definitely spent some time with Mark. He's, he's an awesome dude, but man, he he's intense. Like people see him on his videos and you're like, Oh, maybe it's just like a, how he is on camera. No, that's how he is driving a car. <laughs> that does not surprise me. One, one bit. <laughs> uh, from the, the, I've met him one time at the, at the Arnold and, yeah, he he just he just seems very very bright and like ah you know in your in your face. Gotta but love it's it. like half it's like half joking but half like serious, so you don't know. But one time, quick story, then we'll we'll get off here. Is we were like driving, can't remember where we were going, and like someone like pulled out in front of him, and he goes on like a, a five minute just tirade like going off, and then at the end he get, he calms down and he's like pauses and he's like. And they say, and they say, roid rage isn't real. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh man, I like busted out laughing because it was like five minutes of just him like freaking out on the lady. I think it was like a lady pulled out in front of him, and then he's like, and they say, roid rage isn't real. <laughs> That's nuts, man. <laughs> Shit! All right, man. Hey, it was awesome. We gotta we gotta do this more frequently. Like, come yeah, on. Yeah, I know, I know. If, um, we're only, if we're only gonna hang out when we do a podcast, and let's start doing more podcasts. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, so you fit I, it into your schedule. I mean, you're on everyone else's podcast all the time. I was like, hey, yeah, yeah. who put you on first? That you, yeah, you, you <laughs> were, you, you popped my podcast, Jerry. That's for sure. Uh-huh. Um, and now I, uh, you opened up the floodgates. Now you're on all the podcasts. Yeah, apparently so. Um, <laughs> it, I, uh, I, I would love to do it more, man. Uh, honestly, anytime, anytime you're free, uh, I'm, you know, I, I basically got uh, well. I I, sh- I can't lie. I'm kind of I'm kind of busy lately. But anytime our schedules match up, I'm more than happy to. You gotta you gotta catch up to Derek. He's he's got a big lead. Yeah, he does. He does. But I mean, hey, when you got all that delicious PR breaker protein and uh, 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 pre workout to promote, like you know, you just gotta 
got to do your thing. Yep. Cool, man. Shit, dude. This was awesome. I'm glad we got a chance to, to do yeah. it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Absolute Strength Podcast. I know I had a ton of fun producing it for you. And before you go, if you could just drop me some feedback, I'd love it. I love reading your feedback. So you can go over to iTunes, leave a five-star rating, write a little review of what you think of the podcast. I absolutely love it. I read every single one. But it's cool if you don't want to do that. I get it. I get it. No one wants to really go out of their way to, to do anything, let alone write a review. But I want to get your feedback. So send me, drop me a line on Instagram, at Hunt Fitness, or on Facebook, Kyle Hunt, or on Twitter, or send a, a pigeon or something. I don't, I don't know. I just want to hear your feedback. So if you want to give me some feedback, let me know what you think. Hit me up on Instagram, at Hunt Fitness. And before you go, I have one last thing. One last thing I want to say. I have a program I want you to check out. It's actually called the Absolute Strength Program, and the link is in the show notes. It's a program I designed to help increase my own squat bench and deadlift. And I got pretty strong off of it, and I think you're going to like it. It's a, it's a great book. Thousands of people have got amazing results from it. It's in the show notes. All right, guys. Until next time. Until next episode. Peace.